Baby rattlesnakes, tips and tricks, coming up. Yo, Venom Squad. Hey, I want to thank Sean Black. Thank you for your support, bro. Dan McCarty. Hey, I got one picked out for you, brother. It's one we're going to hold back and start thinking of a name. Because this is going to be your award, Big Daddy. So, <laughs> And it's a little female. We're going to show her to you here shortly. But hey, when I say share the pain, the Venom Squad is definitely sharing the pain. And you know what? Just a quick shout out. I mean, you know, Phil's dad shared the pain. Hey, Brandon Marsh. His father's suffering from cancer. Brandon, you're in our prayers. And Don Lager, you know, he's going through some rough times too. Don, we love you, brother, and we're here for you, and the Venom Squad's here for you. Among others, I mean, wow. And, you know, we're living in such a terrible time right now, and to have to deal with cancer and sickness like this, it's just it's devastating. And, and you know what? And... We're praying for everybody, and I hope everybody is in good spirits, as good as we can get right now. So, Gun Squad, share the pain. Let's show some love to each other. What's up, my Venom Squad? Hey, guys. Today, we're going to do a video on some tips and tricks on getting them little babies started and getting them feeding and getting them thriving. And, of course, wouldn't be a Venom Central video without some fangs in your face. Hey, and we got some pretty cool ones today. Hey, we're learning so much from doing these this fangs in your face videos. I mean, just about the strike sequence in itself. It's, it's, it's amazing. And pay close attention to one of the culminatives, one of our rattlesnakes that we fed in this. Now, I'm going to tell you something. We've seen a lot of snakes shed fangs mid-bite. Bite and spit a fang out or a fang go flying. This one does two of them at the same time, both fangs. And I didn't see it until we watched it. And we had to watch it several times and really slow it and stop it and see it. And I came back in here after he was done eating his rat and I found two perfect shed fangs in his cage. And, and what he does is after he drills it, after he bites it and he releases, you'll see when he's going back, you'll see two things sticking out sideways. And we thought it might have been just some venom stream or maybe some saliva or just water from the rat. But no, it was two fangs. He literally bites it and on it, pull back, you see two fangs come out sideways and he drops them. It's so cool. I mean... And it's hard to see. You'll have to stop it and watch it again. I had to watch it five times. I came in here, looked in the cage, and I go, yeah, there's there's two perfect shed fangs. It's just amazing how they can just get rid of them and reload them. Because I'll tell you something, which I didn't get on film, was after he bit this rat, and we turned the venom cam off, he did a big fang stretch, and he moved both of them around. He's backed, locked, and loaded. I mean, he spit the old ones out and two new ones right in place during a feeding it was cool but that's the kind of stuff i love to do i mean to me these stripes and doing this this is poetry in motion i mean it's really slick it's you know i mean it's for me i mean there's certain things that i love and and, and it's and it's my snakes and these strike scenes but you know it's it's to me it's it, it's poetry in motion it really is i mean it's it's like watching a perfect right hand and left hook get executed um you know, watching the front end come up on an FXR. <laughs> and for me, it's just, it, it, it's cool stuff. But anyways, guys, today we're going to get into baby rattlesnakes, okay? Some of the babies we had born here a few weeks ago. Now, they're all feeding. They're all doing good. Um, but we're going to show you some tips and tricks on how to get them started, you know. And I got a few little tricks up my sleeve, and, I, and they're all eating except one. There's always one problem child. And I'll get it going, but um, they've all shed out. They've all eaten. They're all doing really well. And Dan McCarty, hey, I've got a female that I'm holding back, and it's going to be your award, bro. So you pick out a name for this mean little bitch. <laughs> she was actually the first female that bit and killed a mouse and consumed it, and she done it the next day. She was born one day. She shed that night. She ate the next day. It was remarkable. But 
We're going to get to it, guys, and we're going to have some fun, and we're going to show you some babies. Hey, just to give you guys a little update here, we I've been talking about moving some animals out of the grow-out tubs and getting them into bigger units, and we've done that. We've actually got us some new vision caging, and we were able to move almost all of our neotropicals that were in the grow-out tubs that are just about adults now into some nice big units. And we were actually able to move our our, our big pair of gaboons into a, a nice large vision cage. And you can see we've got it all set up very natural, very naturalistic. <laughs> There's a lot of foliage in there and places for them to tuck up and feel secure. And there's a the big female in the back. And here's a, a very large male. And we were able to move our, our up and comer gaboons into some nice big units. That's just how I grow things guys. I start them in grow out tubs and move them up in stages as they're growing and then we move them into a big exhibit. And it, you know, we we would rather spend our money on on taking care of the animals that we have and make them happy and give them what they need to thrive than, you know, buying a bunch more animals just so we have some other stuff to show off on our channel you know we we just don't do that kind of foolish stuff <laughs> i mean we like to take care of what we got and make sure everything is where it needs to be and what it needs to have but these are some of our neotropical rattlesnakes and they're getting pretty good size these are the the crowless derisus dryennis and then up here we've got our Crolisterisus cuminensis. There's a pair. But just to give you guys a little update on some new stuff we're doing here. And here's another upgrade we did. We were able to move our our male Bothrops Laocorus, that's him right there, into a nice big unit and set him up really cool. And we got him set up. He's got a nice big hide log in there and some climbing branches and And he's out right now, which usually during the day, he's tucked up in that hide log over there. But he's out right now because he's waiting on a feed. <laughs> That's what he's doing. <laughs> what a beautiful specimen. And he's a daddy too. He's going to be a daddy again here shortly. Hey guys, before we get involved in this with all of our newborn baby rattlesnakes um there's a few things that i gotta tell you guys um we've been working on this video for a couple days and i actually done some feedings because these guys are all doing really well and i filmed a couple feedings and we can't show them to you um we woke up this morning to see that nine or ten of our videos have been removed from youtube and they were some of our bigger videos just because um there's a jealous mental midget out there that can't stand to see us succeed <laughs> and and the thing is we've got a very good friend that is that is one of these forensic computer analysts guys and he, he's a cool cat but he spent six hours here today going through all of our YouTube stuff and pulling his computers out and retracing things and and it's all got one common denominator <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you you know We've got more up our sleeve than just live feedings. You know, we're an actual educational channel. We actually have skill and knowledge. And you know, what they've done for us by, by reporting our videos and YouTube removing our videos, what they've actually done for us has helped us. Because now I can go back and redo them nine or 10 videos even better. 
minus the live feedings, but if you guys have some old videos, because they're probably going to pull more. Um, if there's some older videos that, that you guys like, that you learned stuff from, that you like to reference to, you better go back and record them or do something because they're probably going to pull more. But this ain't going to stop us. You know, there's, there's three things you don't mess with. You know, you don't mess with a man's family. You don't mess with his money. Never. And you don't mess with a man's motorcycle. And now you've messed with my money. And you know what? Revenge is a dish best served raw. And it's coming. Trust me, it's coming. And you know what? We do it with class. And you know how we're going to do it? Make this channel bigger and better than it's ever been. You know what? Because you couldn't do what we do. You ain't got the skill. You ain't got the knowledge. And you know what? Sit in your chair and watch your computer and keep eating your hair. Because by the time we're done, it's probably all going to be gone. Because nothing is stopping Venom Central. And one more thing I want to hit on is the upcoming reptile laws. Guys, there's things happening out there in all the different states. And I just watched a video, um, um, Camp Kennan, you know, and, and, and I watch Kennan. He, he's a cool cat, <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's a true educator. But he may have to give up one of his pythons. And they're changing the laws down there where even people that are grandfathered in can't keep certain animals which you know florida's a melting pot for invasive species and i understand that but no one does it better than kenan he's got exhibits built that are escape proof and you know but but the thing is is hit usarcfl.org it's going to help the lobbyists try to amend these laws that are changing down there in florida now i know you guys are thinking well how does this affect willie he's in south carolina you know what eventually it affects all of us you know, and there are some laws that need to be in place, but you know, the guys that are already grandfathered in, they shouldn't have to destroy their animals. I just, I think that's foolish. And you know, so check out Camp Kennan. The video is he may have to kill a snake. I mean, check it out and you can get more information on it, but it's, it, it, it's just wrong in every sense of the word. I'll tell you what, I watch very few people and, and you know, I watch Dingo. Dingo's a riot. <laughs> You can't help it. Dingo is funny, and he's a skilled snake handler. But anyways, um, guys, they're pulling my videos, and we know where it's coming from. We're being targeted, and you know what? So be it. It's not going to stop us. We're, we're still here, and we just won't do the live feedings no more, you know? And we do it in an educational way, you know? <laughs> and the thing is, it doesn't make or break us. It really doesn't. It just gives us an opportunity to do 10 more videos on them topics. And now we can do them even better because we got the better cameras, the better lights, we got the better audio system. We can make these videos really big now. But it messed with my money because they were high earning videos. And that's something that you don't do. You don't mess with a man's money, <laughs> you know? So don't worry guys, we're not going nowhere. We're gonna do the right thing and we're gonna do the classy thing. We're gonna redo these videos. And we'll leave the feeding out. And if we keep getting tagged and screwed with, then we'll fight it legally. We will fight it legally. <laughs> it's okay, baby. It was a light. <laughs> My wife about jumped out of her skin. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we're going to jump into it. I'm going to show you these little babies. And I'm going to tell you guys some tips and tricks on how to take care of baby rattlesnakes. Okay, guys. Now, to start out with, with babies, now you guys can go back and see the video of... of of that mama after she had all them babies and a big bunch of babies in there i'll have dina pop up a thing in there showing the showing which video it is but anyways now what i normally do is i mean we produce so many babies and, and i got a system okay but like with baby rattlesnakes i'll i'll put them in a tub all together with a water bowl and i'll leave them in there for a few days i kind of like let them settle and just you know i don't like to move them around a bunch we just let them kind of chill out for a few days then I'll separate them all out and I'll put them into my little baby rack, okay? And the most important thing with little baby crotalids, with a lot of baby bothrops, anything, is getting that first shed off them, okay? That first shed is very important. So what I do is I don't keep them wet. I give them just a little mist in their little tub, hit a little mist, jack up the humidity, 
until that first shed happens. Because dry shed on a baby rattlesnake, it can be a death sentence. You're gonna end up soaking them and, and trying to peel them and, and they're just too small and fragile and delicate to do that, you know? So it's important to get that first shed off them clean. So I'll keep them at a little bit of higher humidity, you know, until they shed their skin. Then after they shed, I'll go ahead and change everything out, run them dry and temperature, okay? Temperature is dependent on the species, you know? Now, you see, I run this thing at 81. This is, this is a little two inch strip of heat tape that sits in the back of the rack. And that's their warm spot, okay, at 81 degrees. But the front of the rack, it gets, it stays at about 78 degrees, okay? And depending on the air temperature in the room. But you don't want to run them too hot. You don't want to run them too cold. You got to find that happy medium for them, you know? And sometimes you got to play with it to trigger a feed. Like, I found that these guys like it at about... 80 to 81 degrees on a warm spot, but then they like that cool spot. I don't know if you can see it, but some of them are, are up on the cool end. But what I do to get these guys started, started feeding, I mean, after they had that first shed, the, I mean, the most important thing is, is to get them feeding pronto. You wanna get a meal into them, okay? And we'll start with a live prey at them, which, which we did last night. <laughs> Okay, and we got some great footage and and um, Actually, you know, I'm gonna post one of them on my on my Instagram. You guys can see it <laughs> but I'll start with a live prey at them and and this is important with baby rattlesnakes You know a lot of guys will will, will go well. Okay, they're small. We'll try pinkies, you know And the thing is sometimes they might take them, but it doesn't trigger that feed mode in them You need something a little bit bigger like even with these baby Zopcons, these these little Yucatan rattlesnakes, I start them on little fuzzies. Something with a little bit of hair, something that can run. I'll start them on this size. Got him in there, D? Here, you need the light, huh? He might bite me. <laughs> That's the size that you want right there, okay? You want something that can jump around and attract that snake to get his attention, you know, not only on a little heat signature, but the movement, the movement, like they zone in on that movement and it gets them fired up, you know, so that's the size that you want to start with, with a young rattlesnake, you know, and of course, some of your mountain species are smaller. You're going to have to start with a pinky or start with something smaller, but with, you know, baby timbers, baby canebrakes, easterns, baby zobs, you need tropicals, all of them mid-sized to larger rattlesnakes i start with hopper mice and it just it's the movement it's the movement and most of the time they'll go for that they'll grab that and if they don't grab that if they don't grab that and it spooks them i'll go to a fresh killed i'll i'll thump one and i'll split its head open a fresh kill and just leave it in there with them overnight. And a lot of times they'll just take it that way. Because sometimes a, a, a little hopper running around there, it'll spook that little rattlesnake. He'll just try to get away from it. You know what I mean? But I'll, I'll start with a fresh killed one. And it, I call it braining. And, and the thing is, it's splitting its head open and getting some of the mush. And, it, it, and it's kind of gross. But the smell gets that snake to feed. Okay? And if that fails... I got a little trick I do, and I just, I've been doing this for years, you know, for me snake hunting, I've realized that after, after a rain, after a summer shower, after, you know, reptiles become active. They just become active and start moving and go out and start hunting, you know, and what I figured out is that if I get a baby that won't eat, I'll pull that drawer open, I'll give it a good mist, close it. Let it sit for an hour. Let that humidity jack up. And I'll notice that little rattlesnake in there cruising around. Then I'll chunk in a live one. And nine times out of 10, they'll bang it. <laughs> it's like, it's just, it's so simple, but you know, you gotta try to think outside of the box to recreate what might put this snake in feed mode, you know? Cause ultimately you don't wanna have to force feed them. I mean, and, and sometimes you got to, you got no other choice or you'll lose the animal. I don't like to do it. They're small or delicate and it's, it's just not good, but sometimes you gotta do it. And I haven't forced that anything in years. I'm just, I'm patient enough to, to actually find out what's gonna trigger that animal to a feed, you know? But there's just some little tricks to get them feeding, you know? And then you can get them on the frozen thaw, which is the ultimate goal. 
you know. But now running them at the same temperature all the time and you're not getting animals feeding, let me tell you, if I get some that are stubborn that won't eat, I'll drop the temperature. I'll drop it eight, 10 degrees. Leave it there for a few days, try them again. If that doesn't work, put it back to your normal temperature and raise the temperature a little bit. Try them again. Raise the humidity. You gotta tweak all them little things to see what makes that snake comfortable to get into feed mode. And that's the secret, guys. You gotta just sit and think about it, <laughs> you know? And hide boxes to make them feel comfortable. It all comes into play. Little baby snakes, they're not out laying out in the open. They're afraid they're gonna get picked off by a hawk or, a, or a, some kind of bird of prey. Or, I mean, they're when they're little like that, they're in harm's way. So they're hiding most of the time, you know? So think about it and then come up with a solution for it. <laughs> and that's what I do. I'll think about it for a couple of days. Let me try this Let me just try different things. But just some little tips and tricks that I do to get them started. Let me pull a couple of these little squirts out and show them to you guys. They're doing so well. Everybody's eaten two, three times already. And um, Dan McCarty, hey brother, this one is your ward, brother. This is this is one that I'm going to keep and hold back and put with the breeding colony. This little girl here, and she actually was, she was the first little squirt to tag and take down a fuzzy. She was one of the first feeders. But... Look at her chunky little butt. <laughs> She's actually doing really, really well. But Dan, that's your ward, brother. So come up with a good name for her so you can see her in the future videos and we can refer to her by name. <laughs> She's a cute little booger, ain't she? She's got a nice long neck stripe. Now, when I choose a baby to hold back, to put with the colony, what I normally do is, I do it, of course we want to look at the ones that got the coolest pattern and, and the brightness, but these things change so much, it can change and they shed, every time they shed they change color, they just get brighter and prettier. I pick an animal out that is an aggressive feeder. I want an animal that is already just raring to go. That's my first big factor on choosing a baby to hold back. But let me show you a couple of these things. These things are just spectacular. They are just spectacular. Let me turn it this way. There we go. Is it in there, D? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm proud of my little babies. My wife's like, yes. But they're doing really, really great. And now these guys will get put on a schedule. They'll get fed about every seven to 10 days. Okay, and if they go in the shed, then I'll back off. I'll wait till they shed, then I'll feed them after the shedding process. But everything's doing good, even our little baby pygmy rattlesnakes. Now, I got all four of them eating really good, and I gave the three away, and I picked out just the one that I wanted. He is gorgeous. And he's real chunky too, because we fed him, but we can't show it to you. <laughs> And he is really cool. I know you can't see it because he's so small, but he's got like the Punisher skull on top of his head. It's really neat, so we call him Frank Castle. <laughs> but he's got a lot of red on him, and he's got this really bright gray side hues to him. So, you know, he's he, he kind of looks strecker eye, and he also looks, he's got a lot of like bobber eye in him too, but he's gorgeous. He is just a gorgeous little stinker and he's eating day old pinks now. He's eating them like popcorn. That was a lot of work getting this little booger going, but he's doing good. He's like, okay, buddy, let me set that back there. I don't wanna hurt you. Okay, guys, and ultimately your your babies, well, the baby's alcons, they will turn into this in one year. That is a one year old Zobcon. Remarkable, ain't it? What a beautiful specimen. We've got like 80 of these we held back from our last breeding. So we got a nice big colony of them. This happens to be a male. But that's what you want in one year. Awesome, right? <laughs> yeah, little buddy, we'll put you back. That's definitely one you don't want to get hit by. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Go ahead.
Right. Okay, guys, and in five to six years, you end up with this. Now, and this is the little male. This ain't the great big male that you guys always see me feeding and working with. This is one of our smaller males, and he's a big, healthy boy himself. No, 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 no. There you go, buddy. But what an awesome rattlesnake. Look at the rattle on this guy. Look at the string he's got on him. <laughs> but I just love these Mexican rattlesnakes. I, I love all the native tropical rattlesnakes. But this is a six-year-old, and we'll breed him next year. What a cool snake, right? It doesn't get no cooler than that. Just an awesome animal here at Venom Central. This is what we do, guys. We produce animals like this, and we prove it. We show the breeding, the copulation. We show the babies being born. We show the babies being raised. But this guy had his turn next year. <laughs> We're gonna put this big old boy back in his, in his exhibit. We've got a lot more babies coming. I mean, there's the Mexican West Coast rattlesnakes. Um, they're, they're close. I mean, the one girl, she's really big. She's probably about a month out, maybe a little sooner. You never know when these live bears, they, they kind of do it when they feel it's right. Then it'd be all the Bothrop stuff. Then the eyelash vipers. And, and uh, there's so much stuff going to be popping here over the next several months. Then the Bushmaster eggs would be hatching. Guys, there's, there's a lot of good content coming, okay? Guys, and don't run off because it won't be a Venom Central video without some fangs in your face. We got some really good ones. And watch the culminators. I've never seen a rattlesnake spit two fangs out at once. It was so cool. It was amazing to catch that. But we're learning so much with that Venom Cam. Using it the way that we're doing it, as only Venom Central can do. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I mean, the way they can just change them fangs out at will and pop new ones in place, it's really remarkable. But we got some excellent Venom Cam footage coming up, guys. All right, guys, we're going to try to get a meal over here into our our big gravid female Bothrops alternatus. We don't get her too often on the Venom Cam. Oh, there she goes. Let's see if we can get her to come up and grab this. Oh, there you go. That a girl. And she just bit that rat and it's got a little bit of water on it. It's not dried it off, but look at her. She, she's like drinking the water. <laughs> Silly snake. Got a whole bowl of water right there. All right. Set that down right there for you, girl. Okay, guys, we're going to feed our, our monster female Leochorus here. She just shed her skin. So she's about ready. For a for a good meal, we're gonna give her a fair sized prey item today. Let's give her a little tap there. Oh, ho, 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 ho. there you go, girl. You know what's interesting with, with a lot of these Bothrops? They'll come straight in, and at the last moment, they always turn and, and like, hit it from the side. They do this sideways strike. They'll come straight in, and then they do this quick little head turn, and they bite the prey at them on its side instead of biting it straight on. That's what I've noticed with a lot of these bigger ones. All right, now we're going to need to set this down for her. Bump her back just a little bit. All right, girl. Let's set that down for her right there. And she will come over there and eat it. She always does. She never misses a meal. That is just an awesome snake right there. That is six foot of killing machine. <laughs> and I'm going to back up and not get too much closer to her. Because she is a firecracker. 
All right, and since we're feeding some Bothrops today, I might as well go ahead and get a meal into one of my little up-and-comer alternatives here. This is a little female that we're growing up for a future breeder. And she is normally a really aggressive feeder. Let's see if we can get her to do a nice head-on strike. Here she comes. She's, she's got a heat signature there. Very patient. Oh man, that was fast. That was freaking fast. Wow, they're just so fast, it's unbelievable. But look at that animal. What a gorgeous specimen. And this is just a, well, she's like 18 months old. And look at the size of her already. I mean, she's nowhere in a comparison to our big rabbit female, but she's getting there. She's growing rather quickly. But we're gonna close this drawer up and let her enjoy her meal. Okay, guys, and say we're feeding our, our uh, some of our thymus, our culminatus, and we don't do these too often, but this ought to be a treat. They're pretty ferocious rattlesnakes. I've removed their hide boxes so we can get the strike scene. And this guy's up there, and he's pretty defensive, but that'll change once he knows this is a prey item. go buddy that's the hit and, oh and he hung on that was cool that was cool probably can't hear me all over this buzzing, but that's just what they do. You guys get a good look at him. We don't put these on camera too often. These are the, the Crowless uh, Sinus Culminatus. And we've got a pretty nice group of these also. Just some more new tropical rattlesnakes. Okay guys, we're going to feed one of our one of our female Culminatus. Now this is the Crowless Culminatus. I still call them simis. <laughs> I'm just, I'm old school. That's what I learned on. These were, these were actually simis at one time. They were actually durissus at one time, but now they're just crowless culminatus, but I'm kind of stuck on the simis thing, so <laughs> we still kind of call them simis. And this is one of the females. Yep, that's the meal, baby. Come and get it. Oh, now she knows it's a rat. The lights just might be spooking her a little bit. Oh, there you go. That a girl. And we don't feed these guys too often with the venom cam, just because of this. They, they get a little spooked because of the lights. But what a beautiful rattlesnake. That is one of the best of the best right there. But we're going to back out and let her enjoy that rat. Okay, and we have another female we're going to feed here. Let's give her a little tap. Get her interested. Oh, there comes the tongue. It's another little crowless culminatus. Oh, 
Oh, boom! Good hit, girl. That's the way to do it. Tell you these things this is a hot little son of a bitch right here i mean the culminatives the zavcons all of these 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 mexican rattlesnakes i mean they're they're hotter than a damn set of hubcaps for sale at the flea market <laughs> i'm gonna tell you right now uh they're 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 just a very toxic rattlesnake there you go girl okay we're gonna back out and let her enjoy that rat and you can see this guy is up on the up on the damn wall there. Put me! Oh, that was cool! Oh, oh, oh that was awesome! come down out of there like a he come off there like he was on a limb like an emerald tree boa <laughs> man i hope i caught that there you go buddy he goes i want my rat i ain't playing and notice this snake isn't even rattling or anything he's not rattling he's not he's not defensive he's just like give me my damn rat will <laughs> that was cool <laughs> all right we're gonna move on hey guys i hope you enjoyed this um Dun central is here we ain't going nowhere they might pull some of our videos because they're live feedings and that's okay that doesn't make us or break us you know the best is yet to come but hey guys don't forget about camp kennan help support that cat down there he's a good guy I, I don't personally know him i just feel his pain okay i mean but it, it's it's just it's silly guys we got so much more to worry about in the world right now that they're picking on snake guys and I got people screwing with me about my videos. <laughs> so, come on, y'all. <laughs> but anyways, hey, this is Willie from Dunham Central. We're checking out. Later.